Kewe Kwe Bing Ni Hao Wainan. Beo Chin Do Taiwan Lai Yan Yung Siwa De Rong Sing. Wahen Gao Sing Nang Lai Dao Ni Man De Kuo Jia Jin Dao Hen Dua Yoshan Dizan. Thank you very much. Today I'm going to tell you a little about glyconutrients and also glycobiology, which is the study of the role of sugars in health and disease. I hope you'll get some useful information from my talk, and I thank you all for coming here today. So the objectives of my talk are the following. I want you to inform you about what exactly glyconutrients are. And then I want to give you some basic information regarding the roles of glycoproteins in wellness and disease. Glycoproteins, as we will see, are proteins that have one or more sugars attached to the protein. Glycoproteins are selected because they are cr crucial molecules in health and also many diseases. And the major fate of glycoproteins is to be built up in our cells into the sugar chains of glycoproteins. And then at the end of my talk, I want to summarize some ideas as to how glycoproteins act in the human body. Okay, so this slide we ask the question, what are glycoproteins? Some people call them sugar supplements. So they are molecules, that is, simple sugars are long chains of sugars. We call these polysaccharides, poly being many, saccharide being many sugars linked together in a long chain that can be used by the body for three different purposes. One, two, three. So the first purpose with which most of us are familiar is to yield energy. For example, glucose yields energy. As you may know, the brain can only do without glucose for four minutes. After four minutes, there's brain damage. So for example, glucose is critical in providing energy for the brain. But that is not the uh, the use that we are mainly concerned. We are mainly concerned in today's talk with these two uses, numbers two and three. And number two is when sugars, glycoproteins, are taken into the body, into the bloodstream, and go to the different organs of the body. It can be built up in the cells there into the sugar chains of glycoproteins and other related molecules that we will not talk about today. These other molecules also have sugar chains like glycoproteins, but we do not have time to talk about them today, although they are important in health and disease. And the third use of glycoproteins is that they have other effects in our body other than being built up into sugar chains. For example, they can affect the activity of the immune system. So we are mainly concerned with two and three, not with one. And if you want further information on the topics that I'll be discussing today in my talk, this is a good website indicated at the bottom here, www.glyphoscience.org. Okay, so what is the history of glyconutrients? Glyconutrients have been around on Earth for many, many thousands of years because the major source of them is various plants, fruits, and vegetables. However, it was not until the 1990s that a comprehensive glyconutrient supplement called Ambrotose was developed by Drs. McAnally and Dr. McDaniel at Manitech in Texas. 
And if you look in the bottle of Ambritos, you can see what it contains. It contains rice starch, which is, uh, contains mostly glucose. It contains various gums, uh, for example, gum gatti, arabinogalactan, arabinose is a sugar, galactose is another sugar, and gum tragacanth, and these various gums contain a mixture of different sugars. And it contains material from an al algae grown off the coast of Tasmania in Australia, which is a rich source of the sugar fucose. Actually, the only free sugar uh, that it contains is glucosamine hydrochloride. And as you may know, glucosamine hydrochloride has been widely used throughout the world to help in the treatment of osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is basically degeneration of cartilage in our joints. And it's believed that glucosamine helps this condition by stimulating the formation of new cartilage or preventing further breakdown of cartilage in joints. And another important constituent of Ambritose is the stabilized active molecule of the plant aloe vera. Aloe vera has been known for hundreds of years to have a variety of therapeutic activities. And the active molecule in aloe vera turned out to be a polysaccharide made up of hundreds of man sugars, mannose sugars joined together. We call that poly, meaning many, mannose, one of the sugars that I'm going to be telling you about in a minute. Now the gums, uh, when you take them in, the gums which are polysaccharides, these gums are made up of many different sugars linked together, so we call them polysaccharides. They can be broken down in the gut and by enzymes, and these enzymes are mainly present in bacteria in the gut, so that when the enzymes act on the gums, they break them down into simple sugars, which can then be absorbed across the intestine. So when the, the gums are broken down, they're broken down to simple sugars, which can then be absorbed across the cells of the intestine, get into the bloodstream, and travel to all the different organs of the body, the brain, the liver, kidney, muscle, etc. And once they reach the cells, they're taken into cells, and they're built up into sugar chains of glycoproteins and other molecules. And the polymanose uh, has been shown in a number of studies to affect the activity of the immune system. We call that modulating the immune system, immunomodulatory. Okay, so how did Drs. McAnally and McDaniel in Texas, what considerations did they have when they designed Ambritose in the way that I have told you? So some of the considerations, the first one was that they knew that sugar-containing molecules, particularly glycoproteins, play crucial roles in the normal structure and function of our cells. And the normal structure of our cells is critical in maintaining health. And the sugar chains of glycoproteins have been found to contain one or more of eight major sugars that I will show you in the next slide. And these eight sugars are mainly derived in our diet from fruits and vegetables. But a number of studies by uh, governments in different countries, uh, labor government laboratories in different countries, have shown that the amounts of these eight sugars and also other important nutrients in plants have dropped substantially due to modern agricultural practices. Uh, government labs have analyzed the nutrient content of plants obtained 50 years ago with these obtained nowadays, and they've shown that there's been a marked drop of many important nutrients in plants. So Drs. McAnally and McDaniel figured that it made sense to supplement our diets 
with the reproducible high quality source of these sugars, such as is found in Ambrotose, the supplement that I've been talking about. Okay, so what are the eight sugars present in the sugar chains of glycoproteins? I call these eight main sugars the big eight, and they're also found in the sugar chains of glycolipids as well. So here we have them. Uh, the simplest one is xylose, which contains five carbons. So then there are six that contain six carbons, pucose, galactose, glucose, mannose, down to here. These next six contain six carbons. These three are quite similar in structure. Galactose, glucose, and mannose are fairly similar in structure. Galactosamine is obtained from galactose by adding an amino group, that is an NH2 group, onto galactose, and that makes galactosamine. And similarly, glucosamine, which I mentioned before in connection with osteoarthritis, is derived from glucose by adding an amino group that changes glucose to glucosamine. And then the eighth sugar is more complex than the others, it is nine carbons instead of six carbons. And it is called N-acetylneuraminic acid. So if this is a human cell, and this is a sugar chain on the surface of a human cell, if you take a human cell, there are hundreds of different sugar chains sticking out from the surface. If this is a sugar chain, very often the sugar at the end of a sugar chain is this nine carbon sugar, N-acetylneuraminic acid. So when a molecule is approaching, if this is a human cell and this is a sugar chain, if this is a hormone or a drug or a bacterium or a virus or some other molecule, as it approaches a human cell, very often the first molecule that it meets is this nine carbon sugar, N-acetylneuraminic acid, at the end of a sugar chain. So most of these sugars, which are the glyconutrients, are present in ambrotose, or they can be made from the sugars present in ambrotose. For example, uh, N-acetylneuraminic acid is made from glucosamine by enzymes in human cells. So the ambrotose is providing these glyconutrients, or sugars, which are taken up and built up inside cells into the sugar chains and glycoproteins. Next slide. Okay, so here are some facts about glyconutrients. As I said, they're either simple sugars, the eight sugars that I told you, are the polysaccharides that can be broken down to yield the simple sugars, broken down to simple sugars by enzymes, mainly present in bacteria in our gut. So they are foodstuffs, they are not drugs, and they have virtually no negative effects. Millions and millions and millions of doses of ambrotose have been taken by people around the world, and there has not been one serious negative effect. As I said, they're mainly present in fruits and vegetables, and government studies have shown their amounts of fruits and vegetables have been going down in the last 50 years quite markedly. So the glyconutrients or simple sugars are used as building blocks to build up sugar chains such as are present in glycoproteins. And glycoproteins, as I hope to show you, play important roles in human health and disease. So glycoproteins help to maintain wellness, but they're also involved in the tissue repair that follows many diseases. For example, uh, to go back just a minute, if you have hepatitis, inflammation of the liver, and you're recovering from hepatitis,